So uh, I'm mostly going to show pictures, no percentage. I mean, percentage are interesting, but in the end, uh, everything which is based on self-evaluation has a tendency to be a bit overestimated. So probably we need some studies to figure this out. Um, so I'm going to go through different cases to demonstrate the advantage of doing so. Um, so now we've been treating about uh, must be 150 patients with EVO. Uh, paper is about to be ready to be uh, public, published quite soon. Uh, here are some situations of this MCA where certainly there are many ways to skin a cat. Um, we rely a lot on uh, balloon assisted coiling with hydro coils because this is a very important way to reduce regularization and then placement of stent through the balloon, which we did here. So you can choose which artery to stent. And if you believe that the reason why aneurysms recur is maybe flow, but I think we're too much focused on flow. Uh, we don't consider the distensibility of the arterial wall. I mean, that's the reason why aneurysms occur. The whole arterial wall is expanding. And if you put a device in the arteries that avoid expansion, then uh, this reduces the risk. And that's the case here. You see the stent is placed after. You can see that there is a significant shortening. So now most of the stents, the new gener generation, are made of DFT wires. So here are the DFT wires. So the whole stent is better to be seen that if there are only markers, uh, that's why stents visible only with markers proximally and distally is somehow, somehow a way to blindly believe that the stent will be good, which we know is not always the case. So of course, if there's not much material, it may not thrombose, but still, why should we look at what we do? And I think it makes sense to do so. You see here the stent is belay, behaves like a braided stent, which means it went much more shorter. And you can appreciate how much you can um, push the struts at the required level, which is done here. Now let's go to another example where, again, balloon assisted coiling. And then the stent is being placed. Maybe you see here we pushed a bit too much. The orientation of the struts is not what we want. So you just retrieve the amount of pressure and then you can play with it. Now, maybe a little bit of fish mousing, but we just relieved it. So usually it reopens quite rapidly after, or you can use the balloon to have it open inside. Um, in this kind of anatomy, definitely 3D helps a lot and all the angel systems today are very good. Still, at some point, you need to make a plane projection from a volume, create a kind of a line where you say the line is good. And if you have a device inside the artery, you can control what you believe is correct. And here the balloon is in place, you can coil it and you see um, you have the stent that adapts very well, that fits to the variation of calibers with a larger artery here. The artery is here larger than more proximally. And you see that it fits well to the wall. Um, here is a broad-based ACOM. This one here, here is the ACOM. This one bled at some point. And well, uh, here is A1. Uh, ipsilateral A2, contralateral A2, and you see this thing here, there's no deep part. So we just heard that um, uh, the rate of aneurysms that can be treated with webs is very high. I still believe that there will always be a certain percentage where it does not work. Interesting to see that it's used to, it's supposed to, it was supposed to be 30% some time ago. Now it's certainly higher. But there will always be situations more difficult where um, balloon coils always works. It's 0% of failure. And here we place the balloon in the inferior branch and coiling. But you see that the coiling was not so good. Some little protrusion. Maybe you can play with, to do more. But here we prefer to add a second device to control it more to 
occlude this. And finally, we place a stent usually in the artery, which is the most difficult to access, which was here, the inferior branch. Look maybe at this picture. I think um, this shows the ability for the stents to open, which is not always so good. And this is here's a critical part where this part, I hope that you can see my mouse, this part here of um, the stent usually is not properly expanded. And here you see just by just pushing on the device, you had a, an expansion bridging the whole neck, which in our opinion is the best way to obtain a stable treatment. Here again, a magnified view to see that the stent did not take the shortcut here, but open widely. Um, here, uh, interesting evolution, the stents, uh, the mini stents, let's call them like this, the stents that goes through 17 microcatheter, including balloons, were just up to now available up to 3.5 diameter. Now it can go up to four, which means that for a siphon, you can treat it also. And for a siphon today, uh, there's a very strong trend to use a flow diverter because it's very simple, because it works. But there's a growing awareness that this high amount of metal can be at some point a problem. And even if the problem is quite rare, it does not occur that frequent. Definitely there are situations where this happens. And we have now the last problem we had was 11 years after implantation of a flow diverter where patient lost his ICA, lost the ophthalmic, became blind, despite the fact that he was still taking aspirin. And with regular stents, to my knowledge, I never saw it with any stent after one year. You can have a lot of problems, anything, even if the frequency is quite low, but after one year, you're more or less done with the problems. And it does not seem to be the case. So do we need to be so much, if I say aggressive, it's maybe excessive, but do we really need to have so much metal inside the arteries? Um, I would rather say if we can have less with the same results, it should be as good. Another argument, which is a very strong argument in our experience, is that we can stop interrogation at one year. Uh, so this is based on experience, but we've been doing this with the baby Leo since many years, and we do the same thing with the Evo, so that after one year you have no issue to stop interrogation and nothing happens. Um, which you cannot say with the flow diverters. And if you ask a patient whether he wants a treatment where um, he needs to take lifelong antiagregant or a treatment where lifelong antiagregant can be avoided, the answer is always the same. So maybe it's a bit of effort for the physician to do so, but it's not about not doing efforts. It's not a question whether I put 15 minutes time of work more to treat the aneurysm or not. So those aneurysms are treated with the balloon coils, and then through the balloon, through the scepter C here, we place a Nevo. And even if you want to be completely obsessional, which is quite often more helpful than what you expect, if you inflate the balloon inside, at least you have a proper answer whether the stent was fully expanded or not. So here are some landmarks of the device. Definitely the fact that it's all over visible is a great help. Opening in curve is a major advantage and uh, the stent has been changed and rechanged. You all know about the Elvis and the Junior. The step between the Junior and the Evo took several years because uh, well, some job was done on the stent on and on before it reached its level. Um, there is no displacement while catheterization through the stent with a dual loom balloon, which means that usually it's properly open. And there's no issue with the proximal detachment tip, meaning even if you have flared ends, uh, you don't have a system which is caught in the stent. So again, a couple of our situations here, we prefer to do a half T so that we only bridge the A1 segment without having something getting out inside the ICA. Another option would be to say either web, either flow diverter, but if you flow divert, you know that there is a certain percentage of patient that will lose their A1. And if you can find a way not to lose arteries, probably makes sense. A um, couple of other examples here. This is a true aneurysm of the PCOM that we can last for the second time. 
So you may see here this picture that already there was already a retreatment that it was bleeding. I mean, it bled initially, an important recanalization, and the recanalization is not stable. So if you play with various balloons, you can control exactly what you do. And here the stent places half T. You may see here that the stent, you can replace it. And replacing is something which is ideal if you want to make something very precise. And all laser cut stent where you say roughly, gonna be okay, or you can do it. But why don't you want to have something which is a much more precise tool to, so that you can replace once, twice, three times up the moment where you have exactly the stent where you want to. By the way, you can see here that the aneurysm was only arising from PCOM and not from the ICA. So um, now a couple of other examples here, large MCA where definitely many options, but here we did also same kind of half T stenting, making sure that here the other artery is fine. Or maybe this one that is interesting too, not easy to treat this aneurysm. And we first felt that, look at here the 3D pictures, it's quite large. How do you control the neck? This is a typical tricky situation where, um, where somehow you need to control both arteries um, and you want to have a result which is definite because retreatment of this aneurysm is going to be a pain. And here is a stent which we placed uh, initially trying to see if we could open it. And you see that if the curve is very acute, it's difficult to have the stent open, despite the fact that it's good. But here, if you open it more, it opened more here. Look at the difference between this picture and this picture. Here, it's not perfectly opening there. Here, it's a bit overexpanded there. So not so ideal. So we finally chose to take the stent out do our standard way with both devices. And once the balloon, once the aneurysm is filled, then you can push on the coils in order to have your stent placed optimally the way you want to, and even do an instant PTA to even make more sure that the result is the way you want to, which is what we could obtain here. We must have the follow-up, which was fine. Um, I'm talking since 13 minutes, so I have one or two minutes left. Treatment in two steps here. Um, what to do here? You have one bifurcation. I mean, this is the MCA. Here's an early temporal branch. So first protecting, here's a superior branch, coiling the aneurysm with an a bit overinflated balloon. And then we get access to the temporal branch. In fact, the main limiting factor in doing so is to get access to the division branches, which requires some efforts, that's true. But once you have, have the handling to do so and have the habit to do so, then you may do it. Here the stent is not properly expanded because of course the stent is not intended to be like this. And we coiled it, but finally we did not place a stent at this stage because here a little thrombus is to be seen, so better not to do it, we don't need it. But in a second step, we waited for several weeks and put then the flow diverter light in the trunk of M1, which enabled to, to stabilize the whole thing as confirmed on a later, on a later angel control. Uh, here I already mentioned the fact that you can place the scepters through uh, the, the EVO through a scepter C. And in situations just like this one here, where this is an aneurysm that recurred several times, that was treated with different techniques, finally different flow diverters, um, do you really want to bridge the MCA, ICA, um, bifurcation here with the arisal of A1 with a flow diverter? Maybe, but I'm not sure what the price of this is going to be. And uh, that's why here we prefer to choose to call the aneurysm with the balloon and place here the EVO. The EVO is in place and you have no flow impairment on the ACA, which is preserved. Okay. 
And now I think that my time is about to be gone. So I think I show the different situation and definitely in our experience, um, we can say that it's a positive evolution of the now existing stance, the stance through that goes to 17 lumen micro candidates. Uh, you can play a lot with them and this has become our standard of care for most aneurysms. Thank you.